Hey, it's Joe Lines, and I uh, want to do another video here demonstrating how you can use the Excel macro recorder to help create your auto hotkey syntax. Um, I got a little data here. We're going to do a graph. Uh, one easy way is you come in here, you know, in Excel, highlight it, click your button. I like bar graphs, so that creates a nice graph. Great, fine and dandy. Um, but what I should have done was uh, I'm gonna delete this. So how would we do this? Yeah, I could go look up, I could look up VBA stuff in Excel, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit my little record button. Yeah, I'm gonna record it in a macro. I'm gonna highlight the stuff I wanna graph, go back, repeat everything I just did. I'll do that on a bar chart, and I'm gonna hit stop. And now you'll notice here in the modules, there's a new module. And this is the, the VBA code that would run this. And I can run this, let me see if I delete this in here. I should be able in here run this and it will rep repli replicate what I just did, right? So yeah, that works great. The thing is you can look at this and go, that's that's not auto hotkey script, right? It doesn't, it, I can't just put that into auto hotkey code. Um, it's pretty close to it, but uh, we need to make some tweaks. So what I typically do is I come in here and copy and then come over to studio. Um, notice here, so here I just have my Default settings like single instance for semi hotkeys for launching and reloading the script. Um, I'm including my Excel library, so that's important. Um, it's in my library, so it's not a big deal. But what what happens is if you don't use an include on it, um, Studio won't automatically bring in the function calls from there, and that's I like having the IntelliSense here. So this very first one is uh, connect to you know the instance of Excel. It's actually the application. That's fine. Um, the, now we're going to paste the code that we did. This is, of course, from from Excel, right? Now, here's here's something I think it's pretty easy to understand. Inside Excel, when you run it, it knows it's connecting to Excel, so there's no handle at the beginning of it. From Auto Hotkey, you have to tell it where you're connecting to, right? That's why first in this line four, we're getting a handle to Excel to connect to it, and then here we got to do something like this: Excel range and, and throw Excel in front of each one of these. And if it's used anywhere else in it, um, and and let me note a couple things here. So there's a space here, right? So that we know that's not going to work, right? Um, also, this Excel bar clustered this is one of the things you wouldn't often notice the very first time. Um, but Excel inside Excel defines a lot a lot of variables and has constants for them. So if we right click here and come in and say Quick Info. It'll say, hey, Excel bar cluster, that equals 57. I could also go Google this and look it up, right? But um, so where this is here, I could either say Excel bar clustered up above equals 57, or I can just change this to 57, which is what I typically just like to do. Um, unless, of course, it's used multiple times and you'd want to um, go ahead and define it and then just reuse it. So that's saying, um, well, shapes add charts up to this and, and this I did a little playing around with it this uh, select actually kind of helps I think where it's putting it um, and this next one turns out this next one honestly um, what I what I like to do is so so this first part selects that range which you know we can let's let's just test it right so I'm gonna save this um, launch it and hit my hot key and we should see well when I come back in here now it's selected so if I was over here and I hit my hot key again See, it went and selected that for me. So I know this first line works. Great. Let's do this next one. Save it, reload it. Um, come back in here. I'll click here and launch it. Oh, look, it actually ran it. It created the graph, right? Like, I don't even need this next one. Um, the next one, I was playing with it a little bit, and this is just from trial and error, right? Is uh, It had to do with the orientation of where you're putting it. And then um, what I wanted to do is to be able to move it after. And so um, so let's say, okay, that's great, but what if I wanna put it in a certain location, right? Um, the easy way, what, what I thought was like, hey, you know what, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna hit record again. I'm just gonna record a macro four. I'm gonna move this guy and then I'm gonna stop. And now notice, notice this right here. It just said, this is what came up, right? So, now, I'm going to come down here, I'm going to, for now, comment this guy and this guy out, add this here, Excel to active sheet, chart, increment left, um, but notice the space here, so my first guess, and this is just trial and error, right, is to, let's um, move this inside parens, and let me move this over here some, I'm going to save this, reload it, and run it, 
And look at that. It, it actually grabbed that chart and moved it. Now, this, of course, means you'd have to know the chart number or name. Um, so depending if you, how you're doing it, maybe how would I, you, you know, if you wanted to actually run this in a program, if you knew from the beginning, you'd know what chart number you're on if you kept creating new charts, right? So that would be that. Um, you probably could, after you run the last one, get the selected chart and get the name of the chart is how I would do it if uh, if you didn't if it didn't quite flow that way. But I just wanted to demonstrate how you can use the macro recorder inside Excel. The other day when we were doing a webinar, um, I was trying to show the uh, the like the variable highlight though. The, let's go back in here again. So this uh, Excel bar clustered. This quick info. Um, if for whatever reason it wasn't working when we were doing this, and so this is how uh, you can go ahead and. Um, take care of that. Um, I think list constants might, nope, didn't like it. Or it's doing something somewhere. I don't know where. But uh, yeah, just a quick, easy video on how you can use the macro recorder. Often, this code is really, really close to auto hockey, and sometimes it's very, very different. Uh, when it's really different, what I do is I say, oh, well, let me go look on the forum, see if anyone has already adapted it, and then I borrow what they did and say, okay, I, I get it. Um, and then sometimes you just kind of keep playing with it, trying understanding auto hockey syntax requirements and what it's trying to do inside Excel. Um, and then of course, break it down to one line at a time. So you're not trying to do too many things at once because like, that's how I discovered that, um, this, that extra row of this, the was it that one? No, I, maybe it was this one. Um, wasn't even needed. Right. I think it was, it was actually, uh, I think that was telling it where to put it. Um, possibly in the range, but A1 to B6, um, that, uh, it, it, I tried doing it, but it, it didn't, it, to me, it's not putting it in B1 to B6. So that's what, that's the source data itself. So I, I'm not sure what that, and the, here's the thing is we can just Google that, right? And see in Excel, see what they say it's doing to understand if we wanted to use or not, but hope that helps. Cheers.